Right now, welcome back, tubers. So I have just gotten back from visiting visiting with Weeby down at Just Poppies. I uh, got to shake the man's hand. Um, I was quite impressed with his car. So clean and tidy, like on the outside and on the inside. There's just the telltale signs of um, being through the middle of Australia with red dust all over it. So pretty good catching up with him. But he did he did make mention that he would try and get out here and have a look at my power wall and perhaps, uh, given the right circumstances, charge off my power wall for a while. So. Before he comes here, I guess I better do a little bit of maintenance. Now there is a little bit to do. Now that pack up the top there that you can see in the background, that has been in service now for two years. That is my first pack that I've ever put in and I'm really, what's the word, uh, reluctant to take it out of service. Um, it is getting a little bit weaker and I can see, I can see two, two cells. I don't know if it's struggling or just high resistance or what it is, but there's something wrong with two of the cells. So let me turn the camera around and and then show you what we're looking at. So basically, it's it's not horrible, right? But we've got number 44 there and 47. The little trick is you hold the mouse over it and it'll actually tell you which one it is. There you go, and that's number 47 and that's 39.4. And that one is 39.7 and that is number 44. If you need to find where number those, what was it, uh, 44 and 47 are, and you didn't set your system up or you've, you know, since forgotten, the Batrim has a nice little tool that you can use to actually identify cells. So it's as simple as going menu, hardware, and then clicking on cell monitor. And then it's got device LED identifier. You click on that, and I wanna go 44, and then click enter. And 44 up there. Oh, actually, we've got to go start. There we go. It turns on the two long one lights. Now you can choose, you can actually, now I'm going to click red on and off and up here. You can see the red going on and off. And down here, I'm going to click green on and off. So you can, so you can pinpoint which long one is we're trying to identify. So that one there, now <laughs> trick for the new kids, when you finish doing this, you've got to hit stop. If you do what I always do and just hit close and then you go back to this screen, you start getting all weird shit and you don't know what's going on. If you do that, you've got to click back on menu, go to hardware again, go back to cell monitor, LED identifier, start and then stop and then you can close it out and then you can go back to, to your um, chart and it's all back again. So now we know that number 44 is this one here. Now I have done some tests on that in the past and with three, uh, what is it, three volts lower, it was 161 amp hours and with 2.8 volts is 166 amp hours. So I have tested that pack and it does test good. So the questions are, is it getting tired and it's just struggling charging, recharging over and over again with um, what do you call it, internal resistance of some of the cells might have changed dramatically or something like that? Or is it just, well, it, it actually could be the long ones reading wrong. So let's grab a multimeter. Radio. Positive, I'm going up the top. Negative, I'll go down the bottom. 3.94, 3.9, So there you have it. So it's not the long ones that are reading incorrectly. It must be something to do with how I built the packs or age or something like that. But that doesn't change the fact I want to leave them in service when Weeby is here. I will have to hit stop. Close that out, close that back out to the chart again. So we're back up and running. Populate, 56 strings, come on. 56 long ones. So I am probably, I'm not gonna turn up the settings on anything. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Uh, there's not much use me trying to go all the way to the 40 kilowatt hours. He's only got 35 kilowatt hour pack. Um, and I doubt we're gonna charge the whole thing. Bit of an interesting test, I guess. But I'm going to take this opportunity to run through the software side of things. So the MPP tracker, 
which is up here, which is, has about four kilowatt of panels on it or something. It's late in the afternoon and it's doing 470 watts, 8.4 amps. And it's saying the battery voltage is 56.6. .6. The battery voltage down here is saying 56.7. Now that is absolutely normal between devices. This device, this device, this device, or that device, well, shunt. None of them are the same. So you've got to account for that when setting up your charge controllers. So this is the MPP tracker, and it's a software for the P, uh, PCM60X. Now I've had this unit for about two years and it is growing, going very well for me at the moment. So we'll just sign into this and show you around. So we'll just sign into this and show you around. Ah, that's screen capture software, Pete. Rightio, there's a level of professionalism you won't get anywhere else. So A-D-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-A-T-O-R. So the default password is administrator. So now we can jump in here and have a quick look. So this is the parameter settings. We've got battery absorption, charging voltage is 14.4, float is 14.4, so both the same. Max charging current, BTS temperature compensation. Now I don't have the temperature sensor put it plugged in, so that doesn't matter. We've got it zero millivolts and constant voltage charge time is five minutes. And I've also got battery equalization is disabled. So we can't actually go into any equalization mode, which you do not want with lithium, I believe. Right, yeah, let's go to the next one. So log back into watch power, that's administrator again, if you typed it right. There we go. Now again, this software is about the same. So we click on this button up here and it brings up parameter settings. Oh yeah, so on the parameter settings, we've got buzz alarm is set to disable because my bedroom is a meter that way. Uh, backlight is disabled just to save a little bit of power. Overload auto restart. I've got, I set that at, at enable. Um, basically, I'm going to know if the power goes out in the house because everything turns off. Um, over temperature auto restart is set to disable because if it over temperatures, I do not want the inverter to turn back on again. I want to investigate. Um, beeps while primary source interrupt enabled. Ah, disabled because that's a really an annoying beep. Um, if anybody knows these MPP solar units or any PIP type unit as soon as you remove the 12 volt no uh, the, the the battery that's the primary source so even if you've got them turned off and isolated and whatever else as long as they've got that on there they're drawing I know 30 to 60 watts each even turned off uh, overload bypass is enabled that just allows it to go to 16,000 never ever been there I don't think my shunt trip will actually even take that uh, returns to the last screen after a minute Inverters must contacted by PV is okay. I've got a disable because I don't have PV on both. I've only got PV on one. So charge source priority, solar only. Now that's 98% of the time. Output source priority, SPU, which is solar, battery, and then utility. Or you can have it on utility or solar. So utility is just drawing from the grid. Solar is actually um, a state, as soon as your panels get voltage in the morning, it'll actually turn on the inverter. Um, so you could you could misuse this very well in some cases so if you didn't need energy at night time and it just runs during the day that would be very handy I have or I've never used it input range is appliance battery user is um, battery type is user output mode is parallel because I've got the two there now this one is uh, 57.5 I should be noted when you go back to the um, PCM 60x software it's in 12 volt increments rather than 48 volt I have no idea why, it just is. Uh, float charge is the same again, it's co it's copied. Now there's no um, bulk, you can't turn off the bulk in this one. So you've got to, you've got to rely on settings only. And I've only got 1.5 kilowatt of panels on this anyway. Output frequency 50, back to grid voltage 48. Uh, max charging current 120, max AC charging current 10. So that's, I, I just limit it just in case. I, I don't want to charge from the grid ever. And if I have to, I only want to do it slowly. And back to discharge voltage is 52 volts. So when it goes down to 48 volts, it'll turn it, the inverters off, go back to grid. And then when it goes back past 52 volts, which is much higher than 48, if you only had it at like 50 volts, it could do that on rebound alone. So you want to make it go a little bit higher before it returns to the actual battery. Now this battery cutoff here is 47 volts. Now that's important, that one. And that overrides this one here, this back to grid voltage, but only when there is no grid. 
If there is grid, it looks at this one. If there's no grid, it looks at this one. So that's an important distinguishment between the two. So there we go. And they're the both inverters. Now with this software, you have to manually change. You've got to click on each one of these, the each inverter to change the state of charge. So if I want to do one and not the other with solar or even grid charging, you have to double click on that and then click that there to actually select that inverter. Otherwise, this doesn't, this doesn't change on both inverters at the same time. I don't understand why, but I guess there's a reason behind it. Righty, YouTubers, so that's a bit of a rundown on my settings and stuff like that. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn off the batteries and just give, give, give them a really good charge. We'll get those, those cells back up. We'll get the iCharger X6 down here and the trolling motor battery and we'll charge those three cells up that are low, the 44, 47, and whatever the other one was. Uh, in due course, I'll actually pull those cells and we'll take them up onto the eye charger and actually do some discharge tests on them and see if we can work out what's wrong with them that way. Uh, visual inspection as well, because they haven't been pulled out and visually inspected for a long time, so that won't hurt either. Oh, about 12 hours or something later, we've got these batteries looking a little bit healthier. It's doing a balance at the moment. And we've just got the one cell there, I think that is 35. So I have to do that one and 44 and 47 are back up again and I did 47 first and it did about 22 amp hours and turn the camera around that one's done 20 20 amp hours in so I brought it back up so if I had done that with a bait trim it could have taken 48 hours or something because it doesn't it doesn't do all the doesn't do one amp at a time it's only doing 0.75 of an amp and it doesn't do that 24 hours a day it just sort of scrolls across so it would take days to catch that up so Take some load off the old long ones and, and do it with the eye charger. The eye charger loves it anyway. Let's get 35 charged up. No, cell 35, 15 amp hours gone into it. So YouTube, I hope you got what you needed from this video. Um, I'm gonna try over the month of December to do a bunch more videos just to try and crank up the old income a little bit coming on to December. It is my slowest time, um, which correlates with Christmas and everyone going on school holidays. and. People don't spend a great deal of money on computer repairs so i'm going to try and crank up the videos and if you do have one that you want like question you want answered ask in the comments below i'd be appreciative of it for the content um, and as always i'll see you on the next one